At the Money Pit site, Rick Lagina, his nephew Alex, and Craig Tester, along with representatives from Dive Tech Limited, are just beginning a sonar scan of the H-8 shaft. They are eager to obtain more precise imagery of a large underground anomaly that was recently identified by seismic scanning, an anomaly the team is hoping could actually be evidence of a large underground treasure chamber. Okay, Joey, carrying on down. Yeah, Roger. Using motorized propellers operated remotely from the surface, the sonar-equipped ROV descends the 50-inch wide H8 steel caisson toward the soil and possible void below it. So once we get out of the caisson, we should see that change from a hard yellow to a softer return because the clay will be absorbing the sonar. Mike, if there's a void or a tunnel or anything down there, what do we see? We would just see an open, but no return. There's no video now, it's just black water, so I, that's what I expected. So we're down 20 meters now, so we're just passing 60 feet. We're coming on to 50 meters or 167 feet. And that's gonna be the bottom of the can. Let's get a scan right in here. Okay, Joe, coming to a stop, just doing a scan. Roger that, Mike. I'm waiting for Mike to have the aha moment. I'm waiting for him to say, there, there's what you're looking for. Do you see that? See the square corner? It doesn't go round. It looks like it comes and then ju juts at an angle. See right that? There. Let me grow, go back to two meters. Yeah, yeah. Something there. Yeah. I think so. See that now? That is a clear right angle. We can definitely see that's a 90 degree angle there. A right angle? Could the team actually have found evidence of a man-made chamber? located some 170 feet deep underground. Is it possible that you're at the site of a rather large cavity? That could be. If a large void really does exist some 170 feet deep underground, has the Oak Island team finally located the bottom of the original money pit? And if so, could they be just moments away from locating the legendary chapel vault? 100,000 pounds. Uh-oh. Yeah. That doesn't seem right. Got uh, videos dropping out. Like your screen's flickering? Yeah, Roger that. Uh, that's not good. Okay, so I can't put auto depth on and our video's flickering for some reason. Yeah, video's flickering really bad. Yeah, we've uh, lost sonar as well. No more power. That is odd. Everything no started shutting no down. We got a comms loss alarm. Hey, well, you may as well power down. Pull it and take a look at it. Yeah. Yes, and if you think it can be fixed real quick, let's go right back to where we want to be and see if we get some data. Hey, Joel, just pull, pull her up, OK? Roger. Although the ROV was built to withstand depths of up to 1,000 feet, it would not be the first time that equipment suddenly and inexplicably failed on Oak Island. For the past two centuries, Treasure hunters have reported bizarre equipment failures, and usually at times when they believed they were close to a major breakthrough. Could this be another such occasion? OK, you're on surface here. I'm going to pull you out of the can. Let's see if there's any water in this. Hopefully there isn't. Did it flood? Yeah. yeah. It is flooded? Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. That does it for us, then. Yeah. What are you thinking? Big. Yeah. Because it is Mike and Joey's assessment that the ROV has suffered serious water damage, the Oak Island team will be forced to suspend today's mm. sonar operation. Nevertheless, evidence that a large, possibly man-made void exists at a depth of 170 feet has made them more eager than ever to hammer grab the contents of H8. Danny. About time to do something, son. It's happy time for you. You get to do something. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'd like to hammer grab yet today, and we're running out of time, so. Okay, okay. fire it up. I appreciate it. Unbelievable.